What if Jurassic Park was no longer just science fiction? What if the roars of ancient beasts echoed once more, not on a movie screen, but across the frozen tundras of our planet? Well, buckle up, because we're not talking about dinosaurs. We're talking about the woolly mammoth. And by the year 2028, it just might walk the Earth again. Welcome to the Grio Chronicles, where we don't just tell stories of the past, we resurrect them. Today, we dive into one of the boldest scientific missions of our time. A mission not to uncover ancient bones, but to breathe life into them. Colossal Biosciences. It sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi thriller, but this is very real. A tech entrepreneur teams up with a Harvard geneticist to do the unimaginable use advanced gene editing technology to bring back an extinct creature that last roamed the Earth over 4,000 years ago. But why the woolly mammoth? Why not the saber-toothed tiger or the mighty dodo? The answer isn't just about fascination, it's about preservation, it's about climate change, it's about restoring balance to a fragile ecosystem that, believe it or not, still misses the presence of the mammoth. This isn't just a story about science, it's a story about power, ambition and the fine line between progress and playing God. So sit back because the Ice Age is stirring and history is about to come stomping back to life. The woolly mammoth, towering, majestic, wrapped in thick shaggy fur with tusks that could spiral over 15 feet long. It wasn't just a creature of the cold, it was a symbol of survival, power and adaptability in the harshest climates Earth has ever known. For hundreds of thousands of years, woolly mammoths roamed the icy plains of Europe, North America and Northern Asia. They travelled in herds, much like modern elephants, braving blizzards, predators and endless winters. They were deeply woven into the lives of early humans, hunted for food, bones and hide. In fact, some of the earliest cave paintings ever discovered, they depict these very beasts. To our ancestors, the mammoth was more than an animal. It was a legend. But around 4,000 years ago, the mighty mammoth vanished. Climate shifts, melting ice, habitat loss and relentless human hunting pushed them to the brink. The last known population held on for dear life on a remote island off the coast of Siberia, then silence. So why bring them back? Because the mammoth might just hold the key to saving the future. You see, mammoths weren't just massive grazers, they were ecological engineers. As they trampled the snow and uprooted trees, they helped maintain the grassy tundra ecosystem. Without them, the tundra has slowly turned into forest, and with that shift, the permafrost, frozen ground that stores massive amounts of carbon, is starting to thaw. Reintroducing mammoth-like creatures could reverse this. By mimicking their ancient behaviours, scientists believe they could keep the tundra cool, preserve the permafrost and slow the release of greenhouse gases. In short, bringing back the mammoth isn't just about nostalgia, it's about climate resilience. It's strange, isn't it, that a creature from the past could be the hero of our future. But then again, history has a way of surprising us and this time it might just come stomping back on four colossal legs. Meet Ben Lamb and George Church, two men from completely different worlds, united by one radical idea, the extinction. Ben Lamb is a serial tech entrepreneur, the kind of guy who builds startups like most of us build playlists. He's worked in everything from artificial intelligence to space exploration. But when he heard about the work George Church was doing in genetics, he saw something more than just science, he saw the future. George Church, on the other hand, is a legend in the world of biotech. A Harvard geneticist and pioneer in genome sequencing, Church is one of the founding fathers of CRISPR, the revolutionary gene editing tool that's rewriting the rules of biology. To Church, resurrecting extinct species isn't a fantasy. It's a logical step forward in genetic innovation. Together, they co-founded Colossal Biosciences in 2021. And no, that name isn't an exaggeration. With backing from major investors and a mission that reads like science fiction, Colossal aims to be the first company to bring an extinct species back from the dead and reintroduce it into the wild. But this isn't just a basement experiment. Harvard University is right in the middle of it all 
Church's lab at Harvard Medical School is where the real magic happens, where Asian elephant DNA is being carefully edited piece by piece to include traits of the woolly mammoth, cold resistance, thick fur, fat storage, curved tusks. The goal? Create a hybrid, not a clone called a mammophant, part elephant, part mammoth, and fully engineered to survive the icy landscapes their ancestors once ruled. With the power of biotechnology, millions of years of extinction may soon be undone. And Colossal isn't stopping at mammoths. They've already set their sights on the dodo, the Tasmanian tiger, and who knows what else. In a world where we once feared nature's wrath, these men are now trying to wield its power. The question is, just because we can, does that mean we should? Imagine cracking open the genetic vaults of time, not to study the past, but to revive it. This isn't mythology. This is science, and it's called de-extinction. At its core, de-extinction is the effort to bring back species that once roamed the Earth, but have long since vanished. It's not about digging up fossils for display. It's about using living DNA to reconstruct the dead cell by cell, gene by gene, and leading this genetic revolution is one of the most powerful tools ever discovered, CRISPR. Think of CRISPR like a pair of microscopic scissors guided by a GPS. It can locate a specific part of a DNA strand, snip it out, and replace it with something new, something desired. Scientists use it to correct genetic disorders, fight diseases, and now to rebuild ancient genomes. The woolly mammoth and the modern Asian elephant are incredibly close relatives. In fact, their DNA is over 99% identical. That tiny 0.4%? It holds the secrets of the Ice Age. Thick, insulating fur, layers of fat for extreme cold, smaller ears to reduce heat loss, and that iconic dome-shaped skull. So, what scientists at Colossal are doing is brilliant and bold. They're taking the DNA of the Asian elephant and editing it with CRISPR inserting key mammoth traits one by one. The result isn't a clone, it's a hybrid, a genetically engineered species built to resemble the woolly mammoth in form and function. They call it the mammophant. It's not just about bringing back a majestic beast for the thrill of it. This creature is designed with a mission, a mission to return to the tundra, to flatten trees, fertilize the soil, and preserve the permafrost, just as its ancestors once did. What we're witnessing isn't the past coming back. It's the future rewriting what the past could have been. And with each edited gene, the line between extinction and existence blurs a little more. In the journey to bring back the woolly mammoth, science isn't just inching forward, it's leaping. One of the first major milestones came from what might sound like a quirky experiment, the creation of 38 genetically engineered mice. But these weren't ordinary mice. Each one carried woolly mammoth genes. Why mice? Because they're perfect test subjects, small, fast breeding, and genetically malleable. In these mice, scientists successfully inserted mammoth DNA sequences, traits for fat production and cold resistance, to see how the genes performed in a living organism. And they worked. That experiment proved that ancient genes could be made functional again. From mice, the focus shifted to elephants. But there's a problem. Working with elephants is no easy feat. They're endangered, they reproduce slowly, and the process of extracting and modifying their cells is incredibly complex. But George Church's team began by reprogramming Asian elephant skin cells, turning them into stem cells, the kind that can become any tissue in the body. From there, scientists began editing in the mammoth traits using CRISPR. Layer by layer, they started building a genetic blueprint for something new and yet ancient. Then came one of the most ambitious goals, creating viable embryos. It's not enough to edit DNA in a Petri dish. The modified cells must divide, form structures, and develop like any normal embryo would. Colossal Biosciences has announced major progress here. They're not just creating mammophant embryos, they're working toward implanting them into an artificial womb, no surrogate needed, just science pushing biology to its absolute edge. And the clock is ticking. The goal? To welcome the first living mammoth into the world by 2028. That's less than three years from now. If they succeed, we won't just be witnessing a scientific milestone. We'll be watching the return of a species that once vanished beneath the ice. The past may have gone extinct, 
But if these breakthroughs hold, the mammoth's footsteps might echo once more across the tundra. As we stand on the brink of resurrecting the woolly mammoth, a profound question looms. Just because we can, does it mean we should? The ethical implications of de-extinction are vast and complex. One major concern is the welfare of the animals involved. For instance, using endangered Asian elephants as surrogates for mammoth embryos raises questions about the risks to their health and well-being. The process of harvesting eggs, implantation and gestation could impose significant stress and potential harm on these already vulnerable creatures. Moreover, the creation of hybrid animals like the mammophant introduces uncertainties about their quality of life. Without a natural social structure or environment, these hybrids might face psychological and physiological challenges. The ethical dilemma intensifies when considering the possibility of these animals living in captivity without a true sense of belonging or purpose. Ecologically, reintroducing species into modern environments that have drastically changed since their extinction poses significant risks. Ecosystems have evolved and the reintroduction of a species like the woolly mammoth could disrupt current ecological balances, potentially leading to unforeseen consequences. The introduction of a large herbivore into the tundra, for example, might affect vegetation patterns, soil composition, and the survival of existing species. Critics argue that the resources allocated to de-extinction projects might be better spent on conserving existing endangered species and their habitats. They caution against the allure of scientific novelty, overshadowing the pressing needs of current conservation efforts. On the other hand, proponents believe that de-extinction could offer innovative solutions to ecological restoration and climate change mitigation. They argue that reintroducing species like the mammoth could help restore lost ecosystems and enhance biodiversity. The debate is far from settled. As we navigate this uncharted territory, it's imperative to weigh the scientific possibilities against the ethical responsibilities, ensuring that our pursuit of knowledge and innovation does not come at the expense of the very life we aim to protect. Colossal Biosciences has transformed the concept of de-extinction from speculative fiction into a burgeoning industry. With a mission to restore lost biodiversity, the company has attracted significant investment and is expanding its portfolio of revived species. In early 2025, Colossal secured a $200 million Series C funding round bringing its total funding to $435 million and elevating its valuation to $10.2 billion. This financial backing underscores investor confidence in the company's innovative approach to genetic engineering and species restoration. Beyond the woolly mammoth, Colossal is actively working on reviving other extinct species. Notably, the company has successfully created genetically engineered dire wolf pups, Romulus, Remus and Khaleesi, by editing the DNA of grey wolves to express traits of the extinct species. Additionally, Colossal is pursuing the resurrection of the Tasmanian tiger, or thylacine, with plans to potentially reintroduce it to the wild within a decade. Looking ahead, Colossal aims to expand its de-extinction efforts to include species such as the Irish elk, great orc, blue buck, ground sloths, moas, saber-toothed cats, long-horned bison, Colombian mammoths, cave hyenas, mastodons, American cheetahs, and woolly rhinoceroses. These ambitious projects reflect the company's commitment to leveraging cutting-edge biotechnology to restore ecosystems and preserve biodiversity. As Colossal continues to advance in the field of de-extinction, its endeavors raise important discussions about the ethical considerations and ecological impacts of reintroducing extinct species. Nevertheless, the company's progress marks a significant step toward reshaping our relationship with the natural world and our role in its stewardship. In a world where science often blurs the lines between fiction and reality, Colossal Biosciences is on the verge of achieving what once seemed impossible. By 2028, they aim to bring the woolly mammoth back to life, not as a mere curiosity, but as a living, breathing creature roaming the Arctic tundra. Yes, you heard that right. They're really doing this by 2028. But this endeavor raises as many questions as it answers. 
What does it mean for our understanding of extinction and conservation? How will this impact existing ecosystems? And perhaps most intriguingly, what other extinct creatures might return in the future? To delve deeper into these questions and more, make sure to subscribe to the GRIO Chronicles. In our next video, we'll explore the possibilities and implications of de-extinction, shedding light on the creatures that might once again walk the Earth. Stay tuned. And if you've enjoyed this content and want to support the channel, I would greatly appreciate it if you could buy me a coffee. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and see you next time.